All right, well, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today to present indoor air quality with Genesis Air. My name is Mitzi Coyle, the marketing director at the Hutton Group, and I will be your moderator. Just a few housekeeping comments before we get started. We have your lines muted, and if you have a question or comment, please use the Q&A box to the right of the screen. For the sake of time, we will not be opening the phone line, but we'll try to address all the questions from the chat feature at the end of our webinar. If we don't get to your question, we will also be providing our contact information. We are expecting to keep this webinar to a maximum of 45 to 50 minutes, and that's with questions. So today we will have Kevin Murphy with Hutton Group and Dan Briggs from Genesis Air. Kevin is a graduate mechanical engineer and specialized in mechanical systems, is lead AP and has been in the HVAC business over 25 years. He currently holds the role of VP of Business Development for the Hutton Group. Dan Briggs is the president of Genesis Air. Dan has over 50 years in the HVAC industry, having spent the last 22 years with Genesis Air as its founder and president. Dan definitely knows a thing or two about IAQ. So at this time, I'm going to pass it off to Kevin Murphy. Kevin. Thank you, Mitzi, and hello everyone. And thank you joining us for our webinar today. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, we have been bombarded with questions about photocatalytic oxidation technology, PCO, and the application of Genesis Air PCO against the coronavirus and other airborne biologicals or bioaerosols. Our goal today is to explain the technology and show you how it can be effectively applied to clean the air. But first, I have a short soundless video produced by the Journal of the American Medical Association. It visually demonstrates how viruses may become bioaerosols. So here we go. So what do you think you're looking at right now? Well, this is a close-up view of a sneeze filmed at 2000 frames per second for a duration of one quarter of a second. It shows a warm, moist, turbulent gas cloud containing air and mucosalivary droplets that can travel as far as 26 feet. And as we all know by now, current social distancing recommendations for the COVID-19 pandemic specify at least six feet of separation. The video shows many of the larger and heavier droplets falling out of the air and landing on either the floor or other surfaces. However, the smaller droplets will stay airborne for varying amounts of time, some becoming very small bioaerosols or droplet nuclei. And according to the Harvard Medical School Coronavirus Resource Center, can be suspended and circulated in the air for up to three hours. So one sneeze, cough or conversation from an infected individual can contaminate an entire space like a classroom, a conference room or other assembly areas with infectious viral particles. And with that said, I'd now like to turn the webinar over to Dan Briggs so we can dive into the technology and application of Genesis Air CenterPoint PCO. Dan, please take it from here. Thank you, Kevin. This morning we're going to talk about the problem you see on the screen droplet nuclei. We've been introduced in the indoor air quality industry to a new challenge, a viral contaminant that is asymptomatic, that is less than five microns in size, which is the size required, that or smaller, to become a droplet nuclei. As Kevin pointed out, it can stay in the air for up to three hours. The New England Journal of Medicine in March, I mean in May, published an article that stated that COVID-19 may remain airborne and alive for up to 2.7 hours. And when people are in the room, we constantly renew that cloud of droplet nuclei. So now we have a challenges and for some organizations, it's a new challenge. Offices, retail spaces, schools, government facilities in the past have typically value engineered indoor air quality solutions out of their jobs because of cost. Legacy technologies such as high efficiency and HEPA type filtration are not necessarily a solution to HVAC systems that were designed with lower rated filtration. Static pressure drop problems, sizing problems, 
other associated difficulties in retrofitting existing systems in particular are challenges that we need solutions to. One of the challenges as we move through the slides now is what are the technologies that are available to meet the new challenge when we can't really use legacy technologies such as filtration, either HEPA filters for various reasons or carbon filtration or there are a number of strategies that we've used in the past that for a droplet nuclei that is particle that is 0.06 microns to 1.4 microns, we need some new solutions. Capture may not be the only solution. Destruction may need to be part of our equation. So let's move forward. ASHRAE put out a position document in 2009 concerning airborne infection. And in that paper, which has been renewed until August of 2020, it states that air handling units or heating, cooling, and ventilation systems move airborne contaminants or the droplet nuclei we saw in the video throughout structures. Let's move on to uh, look at what a center point PCO comprises. A center point PCO, such as the one pictured on the right, has been proven <clears throat> to destroy bioaerosols by third party testing, which we will look at the end of the presentation. It's been on the market for 18 years, so it's not a new technology. It can be used in new and retrofit situations on air handling systems, rooftop units, direct expansion systems, such as the one used at your home. It has standalone features for schools. There are self-contained units that can be used in individual classrooms. By the design of the panel, it has single pass efficacy. Testing has been done using ASHRAE 52.2 testing devices. And yes, those tests will have varying results and it depends on the agent that's being tested. Traditionally, there have been PCO products on the market. The center point PCO is unique. And let's look at some of the features that make it unique. The center point PCO has energy provided by UV lamps. The UV lamps pass through the middle of a six inch pleated matrix that's coated with titanium dioxide. When the light comes on, the photons from the light hit the titanium and create a free radical. Free radicals are the key to understanding new technologies that can be used to deal with this COVID-19 challenge. So we have a fiberglass mesh coated with energy through the middle. Single pass destruction rates with this panel with third party testing have shown with a MERV 13 in conjunction with it, it can be up to 98% in a single pass. And with the MERV 8, which is not a high efficiency filter, about 88% in a single pass, which gives us a relatively good first pass effectiveness with airborne viral contaminants. Let's move on. As we look at the panels, we see that they can go both in a retrofit, that's a 60,000 CFM air handler at San Francisco airport, or they can be installed at the factory as an OEM product by a number of manufacturers that particular application is in Midland, Michigan at a hospital with an OEM factory application. You can see the UV lights, which are the energy source irradiating the panels. And in both cases, the airborne contaminant is pulled through the panel. And when it is pulled through, then the panel does the destruction, be it a bioaerosol such as a virus, bacteria or mold or most of our applications up to this point have been to deal with odors. We've done a lot of work in casinos, uh, in hospitals to deal with heliports and emergency generators and fumes being pulled in through outdoor air systems uh, that have gone into ORs. We've also done quite a bit of work uh, in the field uh, for various retrofit applications for odor control but the primary source of light has been hospitals. We're in over 140 hospitals nationally to help with infection control 
specifically related to staff. Let's move on. How do you use the panel and what is the panel doing? As you can see from a close up, uh, it looks like a pleated screen that's been painted with white paint and it has holes in it. So that's not a very good filter as you look at the picture. And that's important because this is not a filter. The paint is actually titanium dioxide. When the energy from the UV lamp hits it, it destroys, it doesn't capture. Remember the reaction I've said was safe. That's because all of the activity occurs in the panel because of what we create. We create a very powerful free radical called a hydroxyl radical. That hydroxyl radical has a half-life of 1 over 10 to the 10th or 1 over 10 to the 9th, depending on which paper you read. That is very, very fast. So at 500 feet per minute, when we create that field of free radicals and the contaminant comes through, it does not migrate out into the occupied space. And that's a very important feature of center point PCO. The energy is a UVC GI lamp. Because it is in the UVC range, it will clean the surfaces inside your unit so it can help keep your coils and your drain pans clean. A rooftop unit, an air handling unit, a duct mounted unit, or a standalone unit, either new system or retrofit options are available. And one of the things to, to remember in the past, this product may have been too expensive for residential applications. It may not be anymore. Uh, it works very well in hospitals. You might consider it for your own home. So let's move to the next slide and let's see what it looks like in the field. When you use the panel, here's some advantages. If you're going to retrofit it as opposed to legacy technologies, that may have high static pressure drops of between three quarters to one and a half inches of static pressure drop, 500 feet per minute. The center point PCO panel is at 0.05 feet or, or inches of uh, pressure drop at 500 feet per minute. You can see the gentleman on the right, uh, the, or the left hand picture, servicing a unit. The panels simply slide in and out on a side load application. There are two different types of ways to install it in an Airstream, either a front load, which requires 13 inches, which is shown by the illuminated panels in the upper right. And you can see, as you'll note, the parallel white lines are actually where the lights are running through the middle of the panels. The picture down below that shows a side load application, much like the one that the gentleman is, is using uh, in the picture on the upper left. And remember, there are also standalone units, such as the one in the bottom left picture that has its own little blower in it. You can duct it and recirculate in a room when it does not make sense to do the entire air handling system. You can actually do spot remediation from the little cloud of droplet nuclei. So let's look at the advantages again real quickly. Low static pressure, easy to service. The service is actually just changing out the UV lamps. Uh, it requires very little space from 6 to 13 inches. It can either go upstream or downstream of a coil, and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the low energy requirement, uh, we'll look at that. It's sustainable. That panel lasts for 15 years of continuous use. The lamps, which are the maintenance requirement, last for 12,000 hours or 15 months continuous usage. We have looked at a job for several universities across the United States and found out in a typical school, it means you do the maintenance on this particular piece of equipment once every six and a half years with a panel that will last for over 30 years. So it's a pretty good product. First cost may be high, operating costs are much lower and your return on investment can be substantial. Design considerations. We want to put this downstream of a coil when we can, so we keep the leaving air clean off that evap coil, but it can go upstream. So you can replace filter sections with this panel and a, and a filter, uh, so it must have that upstream filtration. You'll remember the picture of the panel we showed you up close. You do not want to turn that into a filter because when you get it really dirty, 
there's no more energy transfer and we can't create the heavy lifter, which is the hydroxyl radical. Side load six inches, front load 13 with access. You need a door to get to it. Power is another very user friendly feature of this product. It's 0.05 kW per square foot. Now that's not per square foot of your building, that's per square foot across the airstream. So it's very economical. Let's move on and take a look at how the panel actually works. We create an oxidation reduction agent called a free radical. The free radical we actually create in that is called a hydroxyl radical. If it is a bioaerosol, uh, like we saw in the picture, we damage the DNA RNA and we make it where it cannot reproduce. And it doesn't matter whether it's a virus, a bacteria, or a mold spore on the fly, as long as it's a living organism and it has DNA, RNA, those free radicals affect it. And there are numerous medical papers that will confirm that. So if you're using it for infection control, breaks down DNA, RNA. If you're using it for hydrocarbon chains, think odor control. We're in a number of airports across the United States, San Diego, Salt Lake, Kennedy, Detroit, uh, the new extension in Orlando. Uh, there are numerous airports. We've been doing this for a long time. We break down the hydrocarbon chain, which means the exhaust off the aircraft doesn't come in the outdoor air and make your terminals smell bad. We also have done a number of hospital applications. It seems like invariably when they add a heliport, they do it near the outdoor air intake associated with the ORs. And an OR full of fumes off a helicopter apparently is a very unpleasant situation. And we've sold a lot of jobs to help uh, remediate that problem. So this reaction that we create, which is a free radical, hydroxyl radical, it's passive. Why? Because of the half-life. With a half-life of one over uh, 10 to the ninth, it won't move very far down the ductwork. In fact, it won't really get out of the, the uh, panel itself. So having it occur in the panel makes it safe for use in occupied spaces. Remember, we're not doing something new. Uh, the creation of hydroxyl radicals is basic to existence on our planet. And the troposphere, the UV light from the sun, hits particles creating hydroxyl radicals, and it oxidizes things like carbon monoxide and methane and other agents that are extremely hard <laughs> for us to breathe. So in other words, we're just doing a reaction that already occurs that makes it safe for us to live on the planet. Another thing about oxidation reduction reaction is how we process energy in our own bodies. Oxidation reduction reactions occur all the time in all the spaces we're in. Let's look at a, uh, the next slide. We'll show you an example of an oxidation reduction reaction. If you put peroxide on a cut and it bubbled up, that's a free radical like what we, the one we create and it destroys the contaminant it does not capture it. So we break down droplet nuclei, or we can actually, when you see something like hydrogen peroxide, it can have an effect on a surface. So you need to be really careful where you're creating a free radical. Are you creating it in a space where it can affect your lungs, or are you containing the reaction within a controlled area such as a panel? We also can break down hydrocarbon chains with the same hydroxyl radical because it will separate the carbon from the hydrogen. And if you happen to have an air conditioning system where it shines on your evap coil, it will take the place of a normal UV light because this is a germicidal lamp. Let's see what's, what else we have, why else you might be interested in it. Let's go to the next slide. Remember, using center point PCO fills in a gap in the infection control process. That gap means genesis air process. We're only a part of a comprehensive infection control plan. Remember, this is not a little black box you put in the corner and it magically cures all the ills of the world. You still must do all the CDC recommended guidelines. Clean surfaces, use gloves, wash your hands, uh, cover your cough or sneeze, use a mask. All of those things are important 
to ensure the safety of all of us. But one of the things that we have neglected is air and it on the fly through HVAC systems. So remember, what we are is part of a uh, comprehensive infection control, and we're filling in the gap in that because there are no CDC recommendations for what's happening in the air. And we happen to have an asymptomatic virus that can be transferred human to human, even if we know we don't have it, simply by talking. So on the left, we show a retrofit, and on the right, we show an OEM, or that's original equipment manufacturer installation. Do we have scientific or industry-wide documentation that this is indeed a problem? An ASHRAE position paper was issued in 2009 about airborne infection diseases, and it really does state, in fact, that air handling units do move bioaerosols, the droplet nuclei, through structures. So you can clean a surface thoroughly in one room, but if it's attached to the same air conditioning unit, the other rooms you didn't clean with that air conditioning unit, the contaminants in them are introduced right back into the space you just cleaned. So dealing with the issue at the air handling unit or at your air conditioning device, that which is moving air through your structures is a challenge now for schools, for offices and retail spaces that you really didn't have to deal with before. But as the uh, video pointed out, now we have this nasty little thing that hides in droplet nuclei, which have occurred around us for years, but now it becomes extremely important. Let's see what this bug looks like. Let's look at the next slide. What we're seeing uh, is a reiteration of what we saw in the video. All this, this particular slide shows is droplet nuclei are smaller than five microns. They form a cloud. They can stay there for up to three hours. Uh, this particular uh, droplet nuclei associated with COVID-19 can last for 2.7 hours. ASHRAE has a position paper. So let's see a picture of what the actual virus looks like. Here is the actual on the right. Of course, it's uh, blown up a, a significant amount and it's been colorized. It looks somewhat friendly until you look at the picture on the left and that's what's happening in your lungs. That little bitty 0.06 micron uh, viral particle forms colonies in your lungs and they've colorized it. The yellow coloring shows it on your lung tissue. It becomes visible when it's allowed to reproduce. So center point PCO makes it where these viruses cannot reproduce by destroying the RNA. This happens to be an RNA uh, positive single strand virus. So we, de we destroy the RNA of this particular one with free radical technologies. Now I keep using the word free radicals. What products create free radicals? And that's the agent that does the work in these technologies because they don't capture anything they have to have a way to actually render them non-viable. Let's look at some common examples of free radical creating technologies that are currently on the market. Let's move to the next slide. Some of the common applications that use free radicals are catalytic converters, ion creating technologies, and center point PCO. What they have in common is the activity that actually destroys the contaminant is an oxidation reduction reaction. And remember, that's extremely common. It's from like a pair of pliers rusting in your backyard to processing nutrients within your body. Oxidation reduction occurs around us all the time. Uh, think of cleaning a wall with bleach. Think of uh, hydrogen peroxide on a cut, lighting a match. All those type of reactions are oxidation reduction reactions. One of the things that happens is they generate free radicals. Free radicals are what cause this oxidation reduction reaction. Excuse me, I, I got that out of sequence. You generate a free radical, oxidation reaction occurs, and then you destroy the contaminant, whether it is uh, uh, droplet nuclei, the exhaust off an, an engine, 
or you're cleaning the coil on a unit. So let's look at catalytic converters, ion creating technologies, and center point PCO. Remember, their commonality is the creation of free radicals. Let's move to the next slide and see what a catalytic converter looks like. Well, I, I got myself out of sequence here, so I'll get back in sequence. I apologize. Uh, the catalytic converter on your car, the ion creating technologies, the center point PCO, here's what they uh, do differently. They have different sources of energy. The reaction is located in different places, and they may create different types of free radicals. And you say, well, how do I separate all these things? Here's something to consider. It's a pretty good example. Uh, I have mosquitoes in my backyard, a lot of them. I also have children or grandchildren, and I want them to be able to play in the backyard. So what am I going to do to make my backyard safe? I can buy bug zappers, or I can just get a fogger and run it continuously in the backyard. One of the problems with the foggers is my children are back there or my grandchildren are back there. With a bug zapper, I control where the reaction takes place. With a fogger, it happens randomly throughout my backyard. That's the difference basically between center point PCO and an ionizer. Center point PCO is like the bug zapper. It has a reaction in a controlled area. An ionizer is like a fogger. It randomly occurs throughout a space. Let's look at a catalytic converter real quickly. Well, let's let's talk about uh, free radicals. If we'll move the slide, I uh, ah here we go. Uh, free radicals are an oxidative stress agent. When you have exposure to high levels of reactive oxygen species which are a free radical the table on the right shows that by the way you can get these slides and look at these tables for yourself i'm not going to read all this and put it you all to sleep uh, but free radicals the point of this is interact with molecules in your body and they can damage various cell components by damaging the dna and rna the protein or the lipids and it gives rise to various dis uh, disease states. One of the papers that points that out is one on oxidative stress effects. Uh, again, if you'll get a copy of the presentation, one paper will lead you to another if you're really interested. But the key concern is where is the reaction taking place? Is it in an occupied space or it is, is it in a controlled space? Now we'll finally get to the catalytic converter I kept referring to. Catalytic converter uses energy from your engine, so it is a thermal conversion process. It's a thermal oxidizer. The heat from your engine takes the dirty brown particles on the left. The air is moving from left to right. It goes through the yellow semicircles, which are the place where the reaction takes place, where the hydroxyls are created. And then you have sanitized air or cleaner air going out the exhaust of your car. That's a catalytic converter. Remember, the energy is the heat from the engine. The location is controlled. It's only within the catalytic converter, and you can measure its first pass efficiency, and it will vary from fuel to fuel. Now let's look at another type of product that creates free radicals in a space. Either ionizer, photohydronizer, photo hydroionizer uh, are those type of oxidizing, oxidizing agents, and they're on the next slide. So let's see what they do. Here we have a room full of people that are working. We have now filled that space with energy, the ions from an ionizer. That energy causes the reaction to occur that we saw in that catalytic converter. So the ions themselves are the energy source. Randomly, you start the, the creation of free radicals. Here's the analogy. There's a guy sitting there in a blue shirt with his elbow on the table. If you kill the mole spore that's right there on the table next to him by providing energy randomly in the space, he's breathing that same energy in you create the same free radicals in his lungs. <coughs> so here's our choice. 
if it's an occupied space, is this a good choice for you? If it's unoccupied, yeah, they use ionizers in, in the food industry all the time to keep our, our vegetables and our fruit fresher longer, but people are not in those spaces. So remember, if you're buying a technology that floods a, a space with energy to create free radicals and you're in the room, how does it differentiate between a mole spore on the desk next to that guy's elbow and a cell in his lungs? Let's go to center point PCO, the next slide. We'll see what it does differently. <coughs> Excuse me. Center point PCO does create a free radical, but it creates it uniquely. There are other PCO or photocatalytic oxidizing products on the market, but the design is not the same. Design does matter. You create the free radical in the panel. It does not migrate out because of its half-life. The energy source, the center point, is from the inside out, so you can see the light is uniform throughout across that panel face. It's coated with titanium dioxide. Energy hits it. It creates a free radical. Uh, why is it a pleated mesh? Because it gives, her, gives it more surface for reaction. Part of this reaction, this oxidation reduction reaction, happens on the surface of the panel. So, by having the light in the middle, we get good energy distribution. By pleating it, we accordion it out. Instead of being 500 feet per minute, the actual airspeed across that panel is less than 65 feet per minute. So it has a lot of time for the reaction. And because we use a germicidal lamp, it'll keep the surfaces clean. Let's move on to the next picture as we start to close. There are a traditional design uh, there are a number of traditionally designed PCOs on the market. The difference between them and center point PCO is important to note. You can see where the light shines onto a series of little tunnels called honeycombs. Those honeycombs are treated with titanium dioxide, just like the center point panel. But unlike the center point panel, the light is not distributedly, it is not distributed evenly across the surface. You can see where the light is directly shining through the little tunnels. You can also see by the shaded areas where there is no energy transfer. So first pass efficiency is significantly different using a traditional design PCO versus using a center point PCO. All right, let's review before we go to test data. Next slide will be a review of the product, then we'll look at the third party testing. So the third party testing is going to show that we do destroy bioaerosols, a little droplet nuclei. It can be installed across the airstream easily. It's either six or 13 inches wide, uh, depending on whether it is a front load or side load application. You can use it on new and retrofit applications. In fact, right now, during this COVID-19 uh, era in which we live, most of our jobs have been retrofitting big rooftop units and it's real easy to do. Uh, it has single pass efficacy. Now it will vary by contaminant. Uh, we have been tested by third party test agents. The characteristics that set center point PCO apart from other PCOs is where the energy is located. It irradiates from the center outward which allows even energy distribution. It has better residence time because of pleated media, gives it more surface, and the location of the reaction is in the panel, unlike an ionizer, it does not occur out in the occupied space. The reaction is contained within the panel because of the half-life of the hydroxyl radical. We'll close by reviewing some of the third-party testing. You don't want a product that hadn't been tested. Centerpoint PCO has been on the market for 18 years now. It's not a test. We're in over 140 hospitals. We're in airports all across the United States. Uh, we do a number of jobs for Native American uh, casinos that have a problem with environmental tobacco smoke. And you may say, what does that have to do with me? I have a school or I have a retail uh, facility. Uh, and in the past, it really didn't have anything to do with you. 
but now we have an airborne virus. So our third party testing is important. It's been tested by the Department of Defense at the weapons lab in Dugway, Utah, and it was shown to have a 98% single pass destruction rate of the DNA RNA of viruses, bacteria, and mold. It was tested also by Iowa State, it being a virus. That virus at slower air speeds was shown to be able to be sterilized. So design does matter. You can go from sanitizing that match the test done by the Department of Defense to sterilizing if you match the test done by Iowa State. Backup testing was done by Research Triangle Institute with viruses, bacteria, and mold again uh, using an ASHRAE 52.2 approved device. But those tests were done about 10 years ago. We needed to do testing updated with current versions of our product so new testing was done at LMS Technologies. Uh, that testing was done last month, in fact. Uh, we got an 88% single pass destruction rate using a MERV 8 filter, not a MERV 13. Uh, so it put more closely matched what you can do on units in schools and office buildings where your units are not designed for high efficiency filtration. And last but not least, how do you confirm the product works with airborne contaminants. The Center for Medicare Medicaid since 2015 has published numbers of infections that have occurred associated with antibiotic resistant staph. Since 2015 until to now, the National Safety or National Healthcare Safety Network has made those numbers available. And what we found is hospitals that use Centerpoint PCO have a 20% lower occurrence of infections associated with MRSA than those that don't. Again, those numbers have been generated since 2015 until 2012. So we've got a pretty good track record and droplet nuclei are just an airborne virus. They're just another agent for the panel to destroy using free radicals. Kevin, thank you so much for the opportunity today to share with this audience. If you'll close us, please. Thank you, Dan. Wow, that was great. It's especially comforting to see so many and such a variety of third party testers to prove the efficacy of the Genesis Air PCO technology. So at this time, I'd like to go to the Q&A panel. If you haven't asked your question, please do so now. We'll run to these questions, you and I, Dan, and answer them the best we can. Um, the first question is, can I get a copy of the slides and presentation? Absolutely. We will send out the slides and a link to this video to a, a copy of this webinar for you to distribute to whomever you wish so uh, please look out for that email from us after this webinar the next question dan um, i answered this half-heartedly maybe you can put some of your your uh, touch on this are there any devices that can monitor the indoor air quality can you touch on that real quick dan well I answered it here. Yes, there are PVOC meters and there's bioaerosol samplers. There's air testing facilities that will come out and test your air. Uh, there's culture tests. It really depends on exactly what you're trying to test for. Um, so there's several ways to test it. Please reach out to us and we can get you. We can guide you. All right. Are any customers in higher ed such as labs? Yes, yeah. there's a complete. Go uh, ahead. Go ahead, Dan. I'll unmuted. I'm sorry. Apparently, I muted myself. No I was muted through the whole presentation. <laughs> no, sir. You were good. Okay. Very good. I don't trust myself. Sure, uh, so, as far as labs, yes, we've been used uh, by several different labs uh, within hospitals too. We've uh, done the uh, pharmaceutical areas and the testing areas. So, yes, we've used them in that application. Uh, uh, primarily, though, in hospitals, we've been used in critical care areas uh, where people have suppressed immune systems. Very well. And there's also a, a uh, partial list of projects that have been complete on the Genesis Air website, I've noticed. So there's also a good place to look there to help um, see some of those institutions, as well as just reaching out to Genesis Air directly, and they'll help guide you along. 
Another one, Dan, does the system introduce ozone into the occupied space? That's a really good question. We use a uh, low mercury lamp and it does not introduce it into the uh, atmosphere because we pay for a special uh, amalgam quartz uh, as the containment device for our, uh, you know, you fill the lamp with a chemical. When you energize it, it illuminates. Well, that containment is a, an amalgamated quartz, which we have been tested by the California Air Resource Board and certified as non-ozone uh, non producing. Also, all of our lamps are bench tested at the facility that manufactures for us. By the way, I'll uh, throw this in. Everything about the Genesis Centerpoint PCO originates in the United States. We have no components in our products that are not part of uh, a process in the United States. So that's probably something good to know in an era when supply chains have been interrupted. Uh, but yeah, we can get you certification that we do not produce ozone. Uh, that is absolutely no problem. Yeah, I think being certified by CARB pretty much is the gold standard for uh, ozone certification because I don't think you can sell in California if you produce ozone, but I'm not quite familiar with the, the, the code there. Here's another one that's similar. I think you answered this, Dan. Does this product send ions into the space? Does it create ozone? All right. It doesn't create ozone and it doesn't uh, send ions into the space. Though we use energy off a lamp, it's not an ionizer. We use the photons that are created when the lamp is energized, which are in effect straight line beams of energy that strike the panel and illuminate it. And one of the things that you need to be aware of is that only lasts for about 15 months. And even if the lamps show that blue green glow, they're not doing their job. So our rating, that 12,000 hour rating, is based on the energy, which you cannot see, not the illumination, which you can see. So right. on your maintenance cycle, that's an important consideration. Great, thanks, Dan. And so what is the maximum airflow for this process to be effective? Is it 500 feet per minute? 500 feet per minute was all of our third party testing. Uh, it starts to drop off when it gets faster than that. It gets much better when it gets slower. One of the things to remember though, if you have a supply duct that's going at 1200 feet per minute and you want to utilize a center point PCO panel, simply transition out to a bigger size and then transition back to your original size where you can control the airspeed. We are an engineered solution in most cases. So uh, if you want uh, our help in designing for your structure, Brandon Hawkins, our engineer and his team would be very happy to help uh, meet your need to see if this is a possible solution for your particular application. Right. Here's another one. How is performance affected by humidity? We do better with higher humidity. We take H2O and we turn it into OH. So the radical we create requires water vapor. We work very well down to a 7% uh, relative humidity. Now, remember in a recirculated space, uh, oftentimes even if the outdoor humidity is zero, within that space it's from 30 to 50%. We've had no trouble uh, in any application uh, that was a recirculated application. If you live in somewhere real, real cold, put us on the recirculating or in the mixed air side of your air handler or downstream of your evap coil, and you'll always have enough water available uh, for the reaction to be powered. But All you right. can have up to 100% relative humidity and work. We have three minutes left, Dan, so I'm going to read these fast. It's going to be uh, quick. Do you recommend a at the PCO be on when the supply fan is running or only when the space being served is occupied? Save your energy dollars. We don't work unless the blower is on, so we only run when the blower is on. Very good. Oh, that's the same question was asked already. How how long do the bulbs last? I think we answered that. It's about 12,000 12, continuous run hours or 12,000 run hours, and there are uh, light intensity meters on the market 
and you can test your own bulbs. And if you have UV lights in your facility, it's worth a few hundred dollar investment to have one of those intensity meters. We have one in our office and we often test the uh, intensity of bulbs for customer. How often do the UV lights need to be replaced? What is the best way to know when they need to be replaced? Sensor, run hour meter. Um, sensor is the best way, but oftentimes I see folks using a, an hour, a run hour meter. You know that the lights have been on continuously like in a hospital, that once you read the, once you reach the 12,000 hour threshold, they need to be replaced. Has it been tested with COVID-19? Dan, want to take that one? All right, it has not been tested with COVID-19, but remember, we're creating a free attic radical and we're talking about chemistry, not a specific contaminant. COVID-19 uh, has a, an a EPA and a DOD approved substitute, which is MS2. All of our testing has been done with MS2 because it's safe for the testers. COVID-19 is uh, possibly easier to kill in an airborne application than MS2. DOD and EPA picked MS2 because it's safe for the people who are doing the testing and it's relatively hardy in the air. Very good. Where is titanium dioxide toxic, Dan? Titanium dioxide in large amounts is a small particle. Uh, it can cause cancer. Mm -hmm. However, we have done our own testing. Uh, we use less than five ounces on a 24 by 24 panel. If you take all of the titanium that can come off over time, over a 15 year life cycle, and you make a person inhale it for 10 hours straight and get every particle, we're still two orders of magnitude below the uh, 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 minimum uh, dosage for uh, the, the uh, occurrence of cancer. It has another name and I kind of stumbled over it. Is that OSHA? Yeah, yeah. so right. yeah, we're, we're below that 10 hour exposure limit by two orders of magnitude. Very good. And you mentioned that how long has it been on the market? You said about 18 years. Can you give any references? Their website has several references. You can also reach out directly to the Genesis Air and get another list, a more, a more complete list. Here's one I can answer, Dan. How much does it cost? You know, it really depends on the application, if it's a retrofit, if it's a portable, if it's OEM. So I would suggest you reach out to your local representative to get some help with that. Um, it's hard to say really without knowing exactly what you're applying it to and trying to achieve. Well, can it be used in temporary rental or, or portable applications? Absolutely. Actually, part of our business is renting portable PCO air cleaners and placing them in spaces where there's either odor, virus, or just people want clean air. Can the process be used directly without the use of chemical filtration first, such as honeycomb for an environment which contains acetone or other common chemicals found in laboratories? That's a mouthful. Can you touch on that, Dan? Yeah, one of the things about uh, volatile organic compounds, there are over six million of them. What we would recommend when you have specific agents is contact us to see if we have the destruction rate uh, of that particular agent. And we have quite a catalog that over the last 18 years uh, we have uh, put together. So we would be happy to help you. But remember the molecular weight of the contaminant in the hydrocarbon chain uh, determines the uh, first pass effectiveness of any free radical creating device. All right, I'm going to get these two questions done, then we have no more questions. Does the TiO2 photocatalyst film need to be regenerated after using for a certain period of time? The answer is no. The photocatalyst lasts for at least 15 years. We recommend the panels be changed out after 15 years. For cleaning, it's just simple cleaning as you're cleaning a coil, that's just coil cleaner, or just light soap and water to clean the, uh, the media. And what is the frequency of photocatalyst regeneration and, and UV lamp replacement? I think we answered that. 15 years on the photocatalyst and UV lamps are every 12,000 hours. Final question, I am seeing data that the virus can attach to other airborne particles, thusly extending the range and allows for further spread of the virus, including HVAC airside. Is there any data to support this theory? Yeah, that's why you have an upstream filter. Uh, part, of, part of it's gonna get captured. That are, The part that's riding on rocks, you capture with the filter. Uh, the part that uh, is not shadowed or shaded, the uh, hydroxyl field will destroy. So it is a twofold process. Uh, you can increase your first pass efficiency with something as small as a virus, 
by having a better upstream filter that's going to capture a significant portion of it. What we're doing downstream is getting the part that's not captured and rendering it non-viable. I got to read this last comment by someone. It says here, I bought some yogurt covered pretzels from Bucky's and they had TI2O2 as an ingredient. It's funny. It's also in toothpaste. It's in white paint. It's in very common household um, ingredients in the house. So enough said there. We're going to wrap it up. Mitzi, we're out of questions. We're a little bit over time. Can you close it out for us? Absolutely, Kevin. Thank you all for joining us today. To continue this conversation or learn more, make sure to follow Genesis Air on LinkedIn. If we didn't get to your question um, or you have more questions or some comments, please email Paul Roberts. Um, his email is still on the screen, paul.roberts at genesisair.com. Um, you can also visit Genesis Air. So we hope you guys stay, stay safe. Thank you for your time and engagement and keep your distance from that nuclei. Have a good one, folks. Take care. We're going to sign off. Have a good one.